so let's start off with the Capitol building. Who is looking at the Capitol building? The fact that there's the two houses, Senate and the House of Representatives, kind of link this idea of states and the nation, and then the Capitol, the dome in the middle kind of unifies the two. Um, there's the Greek style columns, which you know pay tribute to the birthplace of democracy. Everything else pales in comparison. Mm -hmm. And the marble, the white, mm -hmm. you know, symbolize, I guess, purity here. Ideal, pristine, we're doing good things here. Perched up on the hill to like add to the importance. Stately, powerful in itself, um, but not overdone, not overblown. Not too elaborate. Not too elaborate. A house for the president rather than a mansion for the president or a castle for the president. So not towards the realm of king and royalty, but still important enough that a president can live in there. It's got kind of like a plantation house feel to it, too. Okay. Anything else that anybody wanted to add? So we still have that, we have that continuation of the white coloring, again, and the reference to classical um, architecture with the columns and the capitals and, okay. Who looked at the Jefferson Memorial? We talked about the columns and the architecture, the structure of the building being reminiscent of ancient Roman architecture and how Rome was the greatest power of its time, so kind of our explorations of being one of the greatest powers in the world. Um, we, so we also talked about him standing as mm -hmm. opposed to him, mm -hmm. he was sitting. What did you think about him standing? He was sort of presiding over everything um, and the idea that when you go to the monument you have to walk up the steps to, to greet him and you have to look up at Jefferson and he's just sort of looking down, not looking down on us. Surveying but, the land. Know, right, <laughs> but just sort of overseeing, making sure the democracy stays intact. Okay. Um, the Lincoln Memorial. Who was looking at that one? It looks like the Parthenon. Mm -hmm. that the Greek influence. Anything else? What about the size of Lincoln? It's huge. <laughs> okay. So what, what does that say? Hmm? Okay, so his position in our history, he's this huge man, huge figure in our history. The original statue is going to be a lot smaller, and then when they went to start trying to figure out putting it in the building, they realized it was going to be much too small and it would be dwarfed by the architecture, so they made it even bigger. I always think it's so ironic to think that they ended up making this huge statue of him and making him this huge icon whereas what we know of him and his personality is so humble and you know just your everyday man so i just only imagine what he would think if he could see this right? it's got symbols on it about lincoln but the building itself has become a bigger symbol for um for for, for civil rights and for rights in general it's grown beyond what lincoln was about and and to be even even more symbolic and meaningful um, to the, the country. And the, and the so don't meanings always evolve? I mean, the, the meanings of the power of place it always is changing. Absolutely. These things grow. You're absolutely right. They grow and they evolve. And so what, what we think now about the Lincoln Memorial is not the same thing they would have thought about the Lincoln Memorial in the 1920s. I'm understanding that everything that's historical is not written. Some things are based on the boulder that's in the middle of the road. And it has a story behind it. Why is it significant in the District of Columbia? And why is it significant to you? And that's where I need to learn to make the connection for the students. You know, who really decides if the place has power?